Hey guys, on today's video, we're going to be building a bench for our mud room and going to be putting some ship, shiplap behind it um, for our coat rack. So this is something we've been wanting to do for a while when we initially built our house. We just left it um, in an effort to save money and we were trying to wrap up so many other things. Um, now that it's fall, we have a lot of coats and shoes and boots and it's getting quite inconvenient. So this is a inch and a half thick um, birch butcher block from Home Depot. So we're just going to be trimming it down a little bit to fit in the uh, little alcove and going to be staining it, sealing it, and putting it in. So stay tuned. Okay, so now we've got it marked. Um, we had to cut a couple inches off of each edge um, so that it fits tight against the wall. I've got a board screwed on as a straight edge to follow my skill saw. Make sure I get a nice straight cut. Um, so we'll go ahead and cut it. So now we've got to cut down to size. We're going to put a little um, lip on the bottom. It's kind of hard to envision, but essentially the bench is upside down right now. Um, this will hide the kickers that we're going to be shooting onto the wall underneath to support the bench. Um, so now we've got everything cut. We'll screw this on. Next step is to staple on the ledger board, if you will, to the wall. Okay, so now we're going to be getting ready to put on um, our support board essentially that our bench is going to bear on. I have some extra ripped down three quarter inch MDF that we're going to be using. Um, process is pretty simple. Essentially we're going to be marking our studs um, and then determining what height that needs to be. So our bench is going to be 19 inches off the ground. Uh, the top is an inch and a half thick. So the top of our board needs to be 17 and a half. So essentially we'll go through, mark our 17 and a half, um, identify where our studs are, and then basically glue and shoot this on the wall, and uh, then we'll be ready to test fit our bench. So now that we've got our pieces of MDF cut, um, I've got some liquid nail, I'm going to uh, caulk along here and then I changed my mind, I'm going to actually be using some 3 inch screws that I had laying around instead of finished nails. Um, it'll be a lot stronger that way where it's a bench that will be sat on quite a bit and it'll be underneath so you won't see them anyway. So where you have a screw hole rather than a finished nail that you need to putty and paint. Um, so Gonna go ahead and nail them and screw them on. Okay, now for the test fit. Just like that. So the bench fits pretty good. Um, as you can see, there's some unevenness in our drywall. Um, and then like on the back end, I left a little bit of a gap just to make sure it fit. The nice thing is these walls will be getting shiplap, which is a half inch thick. Um, so it'll cover those gaps and tie in really well and seamless. So now that we have it all sanded down, um, we're gonna be staining it. We wanted to keep it really light to try and keep most of this color. So we're using an oil-based um, 
pickling white is the color. So essentially you'll just take a rag, um, wipe it on, make sure it gets some coverage. It's really a subtle stain, so you might not be able to see it very well. Um, but our hope is that when we put our uh, seal on, which is also oil-based, this, this whitening kind of keeps it from turning yellow. So we'll go ahead and wipe this on and then um, brush on our, our seal. Okay, so for the next part, we're going to be applying the polyurethane coat. Uh, we're using a Minwax indoor outdoor urethane. Um, it's been really versatile. We bought, I think it was around $60 for a gallon, but we've been able to use it on our columns on the outside of our house, as well as our fireplace mantle inside and for this as well. So the biggest thing when you're applying a polyurethane, um, one, you want to brush with the grain of the wood. Um, and as you're going along, you want to keep a wet edge. So what that means is you want to start over here, brush a little bit, then come over here, because if the edge of that dries, that's when, when you're looking across it, you'll be able to see brush marks um, and some unevenness. So we'll go ahead and get started on um, applying the urethane. So one more important thing to remember, uh, when you're mixing up a polyurethane, you don't want to shake it like you would a paint or other stains, because it'll cause air bubbles which can show up. Um, you either want to stir it with a stick or you can lightly, um, you know, make some movements, but the biggest thing is you don't want to shake it because some of those air bubbles will, will end up inside it, so. So we've got our top finished. Now we're going to be gluing, um, essentially gluing it on. I'm just going to run a bead of glue along the top of our board here and we'll get it into place. Now that we got the bench in place, um, we've marked our line where our top border is going to be. We went 39 inches from the top. That felt like a pretty good height that my wife could still reach the coats off the hook um, and just fitting kind of my jackets with hoods. Um, so we'll put this on and then start running our ship lap vertically. So. Okay, so now we're going to get all of our shiplap pieces cut. Um, it's 39 inches from the bench to our top border piece, so we're going to get them all cut and then get them painted. Okay, so now that Jarrett has all these cut out, I'm going to be painting them, and we chose the color Le Lux from Bear's Paint Line. Um, it's kind of a dark gray slash greeny tone. Um, I've painted a couple slats that look really good, and we like the color, so we're going to go ahead and do it all. 
And as you can see, I've got my station set up on my trusty cans of food. So nothing too sophisticated here, but it makes it work. So we'll get started and go ahead and paint. Alright, so now we've got our top border piece on, we've caulked the top and we're going to get a first coat of paint on it, and then we've got a first coat of paint on all of our shiplap pieces. Um, so as soon as I get this coat on, we'll be able to um, nail hole fill the shiplap, um, caulk the corners and the edges, and be ready to put a second coat of paint on it. We now have all of our pieces of shiplap um, with one coat of paint and we're going to get ready to shoot them on. We'll have to rip this end one and that one on a table saw to get it just right. But uh, And then we'll get it caulked. The other thing I guess I'm going to mention is we're going to liquid nail the back of them because where our studs are every 16 inches, not every piece of shiplap is going to land on the stud. So we'll still put finished nails through the drywall but that really doesn't add uh, much strength. So with the liquid nail, they'll be glued to the wall. So I'm nailing them um, on each little flange here. Like I said, it's not hitting a stud. So this really, I kind of just see it as tacking it on until the liquid nail dries. Um, and then I'm nailing on this side, going back through to kind of connect the two pieces together. So really those nails aren't very strong, but like I said, the glue is what's gonna hold that. Um, another thing we did, the reason we painted a first coat on these before we put them on is so down here um, we didn't have to try and tape off and paint around where it um, touches the bench and then likewise in these seams we didn't have to try super hard to really get our brush in there and fit every nook and cranny so by painting them one coat the first time we can just tack them on here do our caulking fill our nail holes and then do a light second coat not having to worry too much about cutting in here and getting these seams um, to finish it off. Okay, so now we are going to rip down with my uh, skill saw this piece. We're going to leave it just a hair back from the edge of the wall so we can put a nice caulk line. Um, and then I'm going to rip this piece here at the end so that this piece will butt into it so that this side and this side both match. So I'll get these two ripped down, shot on, and we're just a few pieces away from being done. So as you can see, we've got everything painted, put together. Um, our coat hooks are gonna be here in two days. So as soon as we get those, we'll throw them on and this project will be officially complete. All right guys, so as you can see, our hooks are here. Um, I'm just gonna kinda show you the typical configuration. It'll have some sort of plate like this um, that you'll get out by loosening this set screw. Um, essentially, You'll screw this on the wall, and then you'll put your hook on it and tighten that set screw to hold it in place. So that's kind of how it gives it this seamless look without any screws hung on the wall. So I've, I've done a few measurements and made a template so that it's centered in, centered in between each slot and centered this way up and down. Um, so I basically have this board that's half the width of this. And so by holding it like that, 
um, it gives us the halfway mark this way and then I've made a mark on the board this way and so pretty much I just make a mark and then you'll put this plate centered in that hole screw this on and your hook will be ready to go on